Hello there from Dallas in Texas, United States of America. Both my wife Rebecca and I have been here for almost a week now, attending the North American Ministerial Council, a meeting that happens every two years. And we've really enjoyed the fellowship with brothers and sisters from right across the United States, Canada, as well as visitors from, from Guatemala and brother Robert from um, United Kingdom. And it's been a real time of working together and learning and clarifying and understanding the important mission that we have as a part of the body of Christ to faithfully be about the work that God has called us. We live in a world that desperately needs the gospel and as a part of the body of Christ, we have what the world needs and it comes in the form of the Lord Jesus Christ. His word, the power of his resurrection, the strength of his promises and everything that points us to eternity, to a kingdom where there'll be no more tears, no more mourning, no more suffering and no more death. And the North American Ministerial Council was an event that we'd planned on our calendar, I think about eight or nine months ago. And we've really enjoyed our time here. And one of the themes that has come out from this is to equip the saints for ministry. What does it look like? I know the Father calls us to Jesus and Jesus says, I will make you. And as we feed on the bread of life, his word, we become totally transformed from hearers of the word to become doers of the word. And this transformation happens over a lifetime. And here at the North American Ministerial Council, there's been some really valuable takeaway pieces that can affect our ministry in Australia. Many brothers and sisters send greetings to those of us in Australia and also have expressed their longing to join us in Australia. In a few days time, Rebecca and I will leave to fly back to Perth. And we're in the, we fly, it'll take about 30 hours flying time. And of course, everybody said, oh no, it's too far. But united in Christ, we're only as close to each other as we're close to Jesus, experiencing his spirit and recognizing that we have one of the most important jobs to do on earth. I grew up within the church trying to be a nice person and warming a seat each Sabbath. And it was only until my mid thirties that I really took note of the call to discipleship. You know, Jesus said, whoever would come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. And all of us, whatever our burden is, it may differ according to what our gifts are, but we have a calling to testify to Jesus, to testify to his sovereignty and his glory, to the power of his death and resurrection and what it means for every human being who's ever lived. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. John also says a couple chapters earlier about Jesus, those who received him, those who believed in him, Jesus gave the right to the for them to become children of God. This is one of the most important messages that we have and we can't keep a good message to ourselves. So if I read from Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12, Paul writes that the purpose of pastors and teachers and evangelists and prophets, leaders within the church, is to equip the saints in verse 12 for works of ministry according to the gifts that God has given to us, that you and I, in our own unique and individual ways, have a testimony that glorifies God. In other words, taste and see that God is. God is good. And so we are very blessed to have been here in Dallas, Texas, and prior to that, celebrating with brothers and sisters in Christ in Florida, so that we are in Australia, and throughout the Pacific Rim, all the more capable of serving authentically in Jesus Christ's name, to be fully equipped for the work of ministry. Ministry means service. And whatever your gift is, 
then you have the capacity to deny yourself a material journey and with eyes fixed on the transcendence of Jesus and his promises, then use those gifts to serve. If it's teaching, then teach well. If it's hospitality, be hospitable and open up your home. If it's mercy, through acts of mercy. And for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. The church. We come to Sabbath to each week for Sabbath worship services to be encouraged, exhorted and edified in God's word and then equipped to go out. Jesus says he sends us out into the world and he says I send you out as sheep among the wolves. He says in this world you'll have tribulation but he reminds us be of good cheer I have gone, overcome the world. Your work of ministry may be difficult and it may be challenging. And then in this building up of the body of Christ, in verse 13 we read, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God. One of the things that we work through in the Church of God Seventh Day around the world is to work for doctrinal unity. What does that look like? Well, just before Peter was martyred, in his second epistle, he left us a message. He said, grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord and the Saviour Jesus Christ. Having knowledge of Jesus is important, but grace tempers knowledge into acts of mercy and care. And whatever your gift is, we are committed to upbuild the body of Christ according to the gifts that God has given us. Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. End of verse 13. Paul writes elsewhere that, he said, you people are on milk of the word. You should be on the strength and the meat of the word. In other words, sometimes we go to church expecting to be spoon fed. And after years of ministry, service and participation, we now, all of us, ought to have a testimony. And, and the measure of our maturity is in the stature of the fullness of Christ. Do you know what the fullness of Christ looks like in you? That everybody who looks at you should be able to see Christ in you. They can meet the... The, the reality of who Jesus is in everything you say and in everything you do. In fact, Apostle Paul said, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to him through God the Father. Can we truly say that we honestly speak the oracles of God in everything we say? That we reflect the fullness of the stature of Jesus? Or do we partly grieve the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. I think it's sometimes in this material world easy to forget the price of the sacrifice that redeemed us from sin, from slavery, from death, and to that, that we can be strong in Christ. Now Paul continues in verse 14, the flip side of it, if we are not in the fullness of Christ. He says, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful screams. Whoa, what's Paul talking about? Well, when the disciples asked Jesus, when is the sign of the end time and of your coming? The first thing that Jesus says, take heed that no one deceive you, that no one lead you astray. And in ministry, Sometimes you can be bombarded by theological slants and aberrations of the gospel that unless you know the word of God, you can be carried away with erroneous doctrine. I was only thinking the other day, in our fellowships in Australia, we've had growth and we've had attrition. What causes attrition? What causes people to walk out the back door? Well, some are offended by Christ the deity of Christ, the Lordship of Jesus. And where does that come from? 
human cunning, the craftiness in deceitful schemes that originate and deny that Jesus is the Lord, that Jesus is Saviour, that denies his deity. In verse 15, Paul changes tone. He's in, in a, he writes to those in Ephesus, rather speaking the truth in love. Love was very important because Paul commended the Ephesians on their love. And he tells them to speak the truth in love. And yet when we go to Revelation chapter 2 and Jesus speaks to those at Ephesus, he corrects them, rebukes them for their lovelessness. So if it can happen to a church 2,000 years ago, it can happen on our watch. The crafty deceitfulness of the evil one at work around us. No wonder Jesus prayed, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It's a very powerful prayer that we can pray every day. Pray for each other, pray for our families, pray for our church. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will keep our hearts and our minds where? In Christ Jesus. Speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up every way into him who is the head, into Christ. That you and I, in our redeemed, called, sanctified, justified lives, reflect Jesus in everything we say and in everything we do and the sense of presence that we emanate. That's the high calling that we have. What did Jesus say to his disciples before he departed? You will be my witnesses. And the theme of the North American Ministerial Council here is Jesus Christ the faithful witness. And then Jesus gives us the responsibility to witness to him, to speak words of life and truth, no matter how difficult it is and no matter how society pushes against it. From whom the whole body, the body of Christ, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly. Not everybody can speak, not everybody can teach, not everybody can play music, not everybody can, is totally hospitable, but whatever gift God has given you individually, it's meant for the whole body. And if one of us hurt, the whole body hurts. That's the reality. Paul likened the human body to the various parts of the body of Christ. When each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. And so the distinguishing factor about you and I with a witness in the name of Jesus is love. These few verses in Ephesians chapter 4 really define what our ministry is today. What it looks like as Jesus, our faithful witness, who intercedes on behalf of us before the Father, and our responsibility to Jesus, who's Lord, who's King, who's our Saviour. Rebecca and I, on Monday, in just a few days' time, begin our trip back to Australia, and we arrive back in, in Perth late afternoon on November the 6th. We've counted our blessings to be with brothers and sisters here in the United States. We have a lot of work to do, and I'm conscious of the responsibility that God has given us. I want you to join me in prayer that we can truly build up the body of Christ where we are. Please pray for each other. Please pray for the church in Sydney and Adelaide and in Perth and the house churches in Geelong and elsewhere. <coughs> pray for Emmaus equipping Bible college classes, orientation happening on the 10th of November and then the first class in February. This is an opportunity through Emmaus to equip the saints for ministry, men and women according to our gifts, and those men who hear the call of God to consider what it looks like to begin stepping into the space of ministry, of service in the name of Jesus. Please pray for success in the next Edify magazine as we reach out in the written word, in the uncompromised written word of God. Thus says the Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it's a privilege to walk together arm in arm in Jesus' name. We are, as the book of Revelation describes, those who keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus. That's our witness. We are witnesses of a greater glory. We believe in the transcendence of our Father, of Jesus Christ, of us being created in God's image and likeness, 
and the wonderful purpose that we have in this time with the resources and opportunities and blessings that God has given us to equip the saints for ministry, to be about his will and work and be faithful stewards until that day of coming. May God bless us and encourage us this Sabbath. I'm here behind the camera, but behind the camera is my wife, Rebecca. And we're doing this video this afternoon to bless you on the Sabbath. From Dallas, Texas, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, on behalf of the Church of God's Seventh Day, may God bless you.